Hello and good evening to you good all. Evening. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here today for the Distinguished Speaker Series with the iconic artist Lalita Lajmiji in this collaborative program put together by the Goethe Zentrum Hyderabad along with Gallery Art and Soul. It is enormously difficult to make an introduction to Lalita Lajmi in a few words because of her incredible history as an artist and the towering inspiration she has been to several generations of practitioners, but I will try. Lalita Lajmi was born in 1932 in Kolkata and is a prominent printer, printmaker and painter. She began painting in the early 60s and has had an illustrious career spanning five decades and more. In her vast repertoire of work, she has explored various mediums and has exhibited across India and internationally as well, particularly in Germany, UK, and the USA. Lajmi has been the recipient of a government fellowship from 1979 to 83. She won the Indian Council for Cultural Relations Travel Grant for International Contemporary Indian Women Artists Show for 50 years of Indian independence organized by Mills College of Art at Oakland, California in 1997 and the ICCR Travel Grant to East and West Germany for two exhibitions in 83. These are among several other recognitions. Lalita Lajmiji lives and works in Bombay. Before we go ahead with the conversation, I would like to welcome also Jaisal Thakkar, who is with us today. Jaisal Thakkar, an artist by training, chose to pursue a scholar, uh, scholarship in art instead of art practice. A graduate with a degree in painting from Sir JJ School of Art, she set up the Bodhana Arts and Research Foundation a not-for-profit that engages with researching and publishing books on Indian art. Also an independent curator, she has curated several exhibitions, Prabhakar Barwe's retrospective being the most recent project in 2019, exhibited at the National Gallery of Modern Art, Mumbai and New Delhi. With that, I would like to say that I am Lena Vincent and I'm an art historian and curator based currently in Goa. And it's an absolute delight for me to begin this conversation. Lalita ji, it is so nice as always to see you. And I think what I would like to begin with is to ask you about some very recent work that you have done, which is the memory role. And uh, with this work, it is something that has brought together a flow of memories and thoughts and experiences. And I would like to, in fact, ask you about this particular work and talk a little bit about your experience when you were making it. Uh, I started this actually unaware of whether I'm going to exhibit this or not. It was meant like a diary. Uh, during, you know, when we were told that we cannot go out anywhere, uh, when the lockdown took place and so COVID. So uh, my, my studio is in the garage downstairs. I live on the third floor. And uh, first few days I was depressed. Then I just discovered some of, some of the roles in my uh, studio and my rooms. And I had not opened those uh, rice paper rolls for a long time. And when I opened it, I discovered there were forms. I don't know where these forms were formed. Uh, is it because of keeping it for so long or whether some water had gone inside, but it was strange that there were oval shapes in the middle and on the side there was a, a pattern like thing. And continuous, it was continuous for the whole roll. And I had not opened the whole roll, I just started. And for me, I thought art begins in the room. And this is what I meant, that we all have some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, art, some kind, some kind of, uh, 
they don't it, it may not be uh, only painting but it can be any kind of art so it is it begins with the womb so all of us have it it's it's that something that makes you begin your work think think of your work uh well uh, this is this is what happened i mean the child the bird and the woman her longings her sorrow and some of the faces of which which i have felt they were very interesting to use in my work and the girl is myself uh, it it is it is like a diary so when i say this card of a diary is uh, my own self you know my own journey so that's the reason we will find some figures and some uh, some memories some some things that happened in my life i have was very i mean i have been open about this uh, i am very fond of fish so the symbol of fish i've shown the duck the bird again and again here the other girl her longing and always felt that we all are clothed afterwards first we when we were born and you know, uh, there is no need for for draping ourselves covering ourselves mm -hmm. and also i always feel that every part of us we we try to hide we it is like a screen behind and in front another you know another part so this this thing like play acting of ourselves comes always in my work yes and these these have been drawings isn't it you didn't use watercolors or anything you yes these are all drawings this what happened was because this paper was so so translucent and thin i couldn't have used watercolors i couldn't have used any kind of painting on that so i just thought of uh, actually today i love to use brown and black in my work so i just found it in my painting box a pencil dark pencil dark brown but there may be some different touches because uh, when the pencil actually these pencils had discovered me that gone to italy and mm -hmm. since then i had those pencils so uh, these these pencils were used brown pencil and this is how it is memories and, and uh, this is of course an ancient bird yes i think those those birds have uh, recurrently come into your work right from the beginning until now the birds they they keep appearing it's something that is part very much part of your language yes good evening lalita lalita ji how are you good evening so you know uh, from all the conversations we've had you know over the last few years uh, um i i just want to first show a couple of slides uh, jyoti if you can just uh, show those few images and maybe just let them be uh, on screen for like uh, a few seconds and then go to the next one just show all of them and then come back to the first one yeah. this is a very old painting okay uh, all these paintings are somewhere in 60s okay so yeah so, this is a watercolor i still have it but now i have to give it for restoration because so can you ask um, you know something because you know there is there is a sense of an autobiography um, you know they like autobiographical notations you know your your all your all your paintings uh, the watercolors the oils the etchings the woodcuts um, and more than autobiographical then you know there is a psychoanalytical uh, you know uh, process uh, or an inquiry that you're trying to do and and uh, beyond that there's even then when you you know talk about the objects you know outside the window 
and you deal with subjects like birth and death i think it does have a spiritual essence also so i feel these all three aspects you know like there's an autobiographical narrative there's a psychoanalysis uh, i think you know you had mentioned to me that you used to read sigmund freud a lot uh you were fascinated by reading you know his texts and you even um, had a lot of conversations with uday and patel uh, many years ago so can you touch upon these aspects we can maybe see a few paintings and then you can talk about a few when yes. um yes. yeah sure yeah that what the kind of questions just now you spoken they are really relevant to all my works yeah uh, want me to say few words about each one yeah so uh, let me just show uh, them and then we'll go back to the first one yeah. now i have uh, i've done this family this is a family tree i didn't i didn't use any color there i just used pencil okay and i mean i, I experimented with different uh, mediums for a different way of doing things now this is an old watercolor okay and uh, i have used not entirely the whole composition but i have used part of it in uh, at in the indian bombay airport okay. i was a commission and i had that large, large paint it's an oil so um uh, i mean this 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 like can you just uh, uh share with us a little more details about this particular painting the the people uh, that are present in this painting it's its family the grandmother with white birds and man holding a blue face uh, does it ha- does it go back to a memory an incident that took place um, that you'd like to share with us yes uh You know, I was very close to my own grandmother, and perhaps this figure and the girl, uh, you know, crying or she, she's wanting to say something to the grandmother. There is mm-hmm. this a deep relationship between the grandmother and me. So okay. this is what I've got given, given, and the man, you know, I had lots of memories of my father. Hmm. and he was a poet but he was never able to uh discard much because those days there were you know there were no avenues like today my work is exposed people see it and i have been able to show my work but it's so sad that he used to write on newspapers he used to write on any kind of pencils and pens and I have some collection of his poetry, but then you are today. If I show it to any poet, they are outdated. Okay. So, you know, I I mean, that's, I cannot speak all those things, but okay. here it is symbolically his holding of it. Okay. Okay. Can we go to the family tree painting, please? Family tree. Yes. Yes. The next one. Yeah. Yeah. This yes. One. Family tree. family tree it begins uh, sorry what so is uh, family tree begins with my parents with my but yeah yeah brother sitting on on the lap of my mother okay. and this is a, a scene where my eldest brother guru that and my cousin me and my brother uh, elder brother of my and this was taken in Uh, I remember the year, but it was uh, it was done in Calcutta, and uh, the, I do have the photographs and all that. So from the photographs at that time, I I didn't have old canvases, big big canvases to start, and uh, it was a gallery. St- uh, they asked us to do it on a family tree, and. I thought I would have only these four, three, uh, four canvases of the same size. So I thought, why not use this pencil method of doing it? I, this also then the last one I've used 
uh, a photograph from my myself mm. uh, you know to show that this is the parameter here this the third one is uh, the both are uncles uncle okay. elder uncle and younger uncle uh, sure they're all yeah. memories that's all Uh, can we go to objects from my window? Ah uh, yes, yeah. I'm just telling Jyoti to go to the slide. Yeah. Yes. Now, these are the. This is the kind of window I have, and I have these masks. Ah, uh, one gallery had uh, given us masks and asked us to paint. So, I had, I have painted on all over the place. Actually, that is. Uh, the work, but I didn't want to use the whole thing. So when I use the pencil work, I just use the form of the box and uh, the window, which is still there in a uh, in my room. It is one of the best rooms, I think, because that's where I used to do my etchings. And once I stopped it, now there is. Uh, Computer and you know things have changed, but some some uh, objects are still there. This is uh, this figure of the uh, child down uh, girl is uh, is a gift from uh, Navjo. She okay. used to do these yes, objects that she had given me this, and she first time when she came to this this house. Because we used to live in Kolaba before, hmm. we shifted here. So can can we see dream, please? Pardon? Uh, no, I'm asking Jyoti to just go to the next slide. So there's again this entire you know series of works where there is the subconscious element, you know that that yes. comes up like dreams. So, uh, you know, like the earlier work was, you know, about objects from my window, which was very real. You know, something that you're seeing every day. Then you go into this entire dream world. So you're kind of playing between these, um, you know, the conscious, the uh, unconscious, the subconscious worlds. So, can you just talk about that, like particular in particular about this work or the series of works, the dream? Well, well, well. Whenever I begin any work, whether it's canvas, or watercolors, or paint making, uh, I'm that sort of a painter who who spontaneous. So I think somewhere from the subconscious, these forms begin with me, and I know I'm self taught, and uh, they are not uh, they are not works of art. Student of art or painter from from the I mean the, there may be many mistakes. The, you know, this is one thing I always admit today that I have made many many mistakes in my life, in my work, and uh, I think I've learned from my own mistakes. Okay. Uh, should we? Um... Can I just show some works about um, you know because there's the other element um, you know in your works um, you have never hesitated to show sadness, turmoil, and uh, there are series of works you have done with you know on the subject of death. So I just want to again show a few works and then maybe you could just talk about a few. I think you even mentioned to me one of your interviews yes. about uh, Bergman's film. The seventh seal. Yeah, this is a, a very early work. Uh, mm. Death reading a book of poems. Uh, somewhere I think in the early seventies. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was going through psychoanalysis, and I'm very fond of poetry. So I had many friends who are poor poets in in Kolaba when we lived, and. Uh, I think somewhere the dreams, you know, when one goes through an analysis, uh, in the beginning it, it is very painful. But what comes out from your subconscious is the the kind of uh, disturbed feelings. Everything comes into your work, and also 
lot of dreams come in for fun. So, you know, normally we all dream all the time, but all the dreams don't come to surface where we remember. But then these three dreams, they come in and we ha I had to speak about those dreams to the analysts. So, uh, I don't know how, I uh, maybe it is the subconscious that the, the, the poetry and what happens is during that period, you discover other parts of your uh, creativity. It's not only painting, poetry and various other, uh, other kinds. So I think, in, I think I've, I've been wanting to write, I used to write a few lines, but they're not really good. And I we used to, I used to know uh, a very famous poetess named Kabladas. Yeah. And every Saturday she used to have a gathering of all, all creative people. And we used to have tea there. And then um, each one had to uh, say some lines which they had written and to read out to her. And I remember when my turn came, I said, I'm not a poetess and I, I don't think I can read my own lines because I feel too shy. Then she said, doesn't matter whether you, you are a poet or not, you are creative in your field. So just show me what lines you have written. So that's how, you know, it gave me an encouragement, a encouragement to say something uh, in few lines. Hmm. But I guess um, your art is your poetry, right? Like these etchings, yes. especially this painting, death reading a book of poems. It's, you know, very beautifully depicted. Should I move to the next slide, ma'am? Yes. Sure. So masks also keep, uh, you know, there's a, a, a constant, uh, you keep seeing these, you know, they're recurring elements in your in all your paintings, the colors, yes. the oils, etchings, you know. So, and again, since we're talking about the entire subject of death and, you know, how you have, uh, you know, you know, uh, manifested or, you know, symbolized death in your paintings, can we talk about, you know, the aspect of masks and the aspect of death? Uh, well, when I think sometime in seventies. I can tell you a little background how the, the thoughts of a, a, a mask came into my mind. Yeah. You know, uh, A1, my daughter was into theater and she was going for place. And sometimes I used to attend her rehearsals. And besides that, it so happened at that time, Amol, Amol Palikar also met me and he said, why don't you? join us and uh, he had just opened his own uh, own sort of uh, his own place and his own uh, thing, thinking of doing something and he said why don't you do uh, the costumes so I said I don't know the costume how do, how do I do it and it was uh, based the play was based, based on an ancient uh, drama and uh, he he gave me one of the books on costumes he said try and discover something of your own so at that time i did something uh, you know some, some some illustration and and it did work for him costume costume designing for the play and that's when the uh, i think the image of the mask came and also, I felt we, during analysis, if we all are put on, putting on some kind of a mask, whether we are whether in front of our lover, husband, sister, brother, anybody. So, you know, play acting is all the time happening. And also coming from a family of filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So, I, and also I've seen a lot of films, plays, and very much interested in uh, films too and never had a chance to be uh, actively doing 
uh, editing, but you know, uh, years years ago, I still remember, I I was wanting to join FTI just to see the, this the appreciation appreciation in films. There was a course hmm. of three months, but since I was teaching, I could not get leave. And I couldn't do it, but that desire was within, within me all the time. And it so happened after I had retired and moved to Lokanwala, uh, at the NCPA, they had a short course of, I think, six weeks or so. And I immediately I went and enrolled my name, and I saw the beginning of cinema and, you know, all the, all the great works of work. yeah you, you you have mentioned bergman's films yes. you know you yes. you that i mean like how yes. you are very fascinated by his work and even his book bergman and bergman so can we go to the next slide so we'll, we'll talk about bergman in a little yes. bit but i'll just show the next slide so here we have a combination of all the you know aspects the performer the cat and death again yes. and um Bobby. i mean I mean, before the performance, the makeup and all that you used in the right. Yes, right. yes. And here the clock, because you know, for me the time is very important. When I begin any time, any work, even a drawing or anything, I usually use a use the date, mm -hmm. my beginning of my day, date of my work, and okay. I feel it's very important. Uh, to quote the time, the time lapse that takes place in one's life, in, in one's thought, in one's everything. So time mm -hmm. is, I've here used time and the, the cat, actually in real life I had got so, uh, so many dogs at home and uh, mm -hmm. I, I could have used dogs but you know the cat is a form which I have, a, I have loved making it, and that of course death again, the, you know, the form yeah. of her. Well, yeah. Now, why I've used go boat? I don't know. It's all comes from my mind. Maybe it's just to do with life is flowing and the river, so it's maybe your. Um, you know, you're talking about life and death and performance. It's again all the theatrics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Yes. So I just wanted to show this one work because you know, from this all these works of deaths, I I just wanted to show this one work which is about the birth and it looks like uh, you know, you know, there's a woman who's giving birth, you know, on the street. You know, she's not even in a in 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 a hospital or in a in a comfortable suitable environment so because your works you know you do speak i mean they do depict a lot of um uh, turmoil and uh, you know the um the very the uh, the turmoil you know in the society yes. and the conditions um so anything you'd like to talk about this work uh well this is this is the birth and I had shown it in one galleries, but I don't think this kind of uh, this kind of discovery or this kind of a thing about talking about birth and skull and you know all these elements that I have done, uh, they were not done at all. They were not. I mean, other artists have not seen doing it here. But in the West, people are much more open. So uh, when I had traveled abroad and came back, that's when I thought in my mind, why can't I show uh, our creativity that begins at birth, at the womb? Yeah. So, you know, Beautiful. that's what I've done later first in the uh, rice paper works. Okay. Uh, this is an etching. Yeah. There uh, is one more painting which uh, okay. talks about it. Uh, can you go to the last slide? 
Yes. And, yeah, and here yeah. I want to speak. Yeah. This is where I saw lots of uh, international films and uh, Ingmar Bergman. Uh, the Seventh Seal. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Seventh Seal. It was, it has had a very deep impression on me and I've read all those books also. So at that time, uh, at that time I never did this work. Much later, uh, it came into my mind mm. that the boy playing chess with the death, with death. And uh, here again, on, in this painting also, uh, here again, the boy is there and the death is about to take him and mm -hmm. there's a chess board. So, you know, these are all the symbols of death. Uh, I, that what happens at death? Uh, it is not the, that only a boy is used, but, but here I've used a dark bird also in front. Mm -hmm. So they're all playing chess. And here these two are mourning hmm, hmm. the mother and the daughter. I think it's one of my good works. I will always see, though it may never, you know, may not be appreciated. But I've done many paintings on this. Yeah, I, I mean, we've taken a selection and should just shown a few. But yes. yeah, there are a lot of paintings on death and. Uh, yes. You know subjects like creation and woman and man and uh, you know like you are and then it's very done in a very mundane way like you're not treating them in a very um uh deeply i mean there is of course a deep philosophy in it but the the characterization of it is uh you know very humane very mundane you know you see a man you see a mother you see a child you see a boy playing chess you know it's very relatable um and and i guess that is the um a very um, important uh, aspect and quality of your of your practice you know how you talk about these things in a very as a very mundane element you know uh, I want to speak about this very thing when I exhibited uh, these paintings quite recently in 2018 mm. uh, and uh, they were at Jahangir and I tried my best to get the audience of artists as well as people, but not, not many turned up. Mm. And later on I heard that because I and the Times of India also began uh, write up saying Lalita has done all death. Mm. So, you know, that made people not to not to enter and see uh, works on death. <laughs> that, oh. It was put off. And, and what I feel is uh, that is something that happens with all of us. We all, all are going to die. And why can't we face that? But people don't don't uh, realize this this part. And it's a it's an element that well, it happens to. Everybody. True, 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 true. So uh, since we're talking about this, I mean, and you know, you do deal with death in such a deep manner um, um, and you even deal with a lot of you know sadness and which all of course comes from your own experiences and you know from things that you've seen you know uh, can we even speak a little more about um, you know um, the other influences you know of say music or poetry um, you know because uh, you you know whenever we speak like when we've met you have mentioned about a lot of poets uh, that you've been reading, especially Virginia Woolf, uh, A Room of One's Own, and uh, Letters of Virginia, Virginia Woolf. So, can you, do you want to talk about that? You mean psychoanalysis or oh, no? Uh, but, uh, you know, like uh, you had mentioned to me Virginia Woolf's poetry. Oh, but, yes, the kind of books that I've read. Yes, yes. You particularly mentioned the book A Room of One's Own. Yes. That was given to me by, by an American girl. Yes. When I went to uh, I went to USC in 76 and I had a small show 
uh, in Seattle. Mm. And there is a Seattle gallery, the, the name of the gallery was NN Gallery. Mm -hmm. So they put up my all my prints. Mm -hmm. Most of them, those that were done at that time. Okay. And I met all these uh, young girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, Americans or uh, I mean, any kind of, uh, I mean, you begin to discover that they, uh, there is some kind of. I'm not very good at words, so. It's fine. Yeah. Going very well. Please uh, just continue sharing. <laughs> How people sometimes vibe with each other. Yeah. And that's when they give you gifts, you know, and they're very really large hearted. So. One of the girls, said, maybe I have given her a gift of an etching. I can't remember. Long ago. It's absolutely wonderful, in fact, to to have have this conversation and understand so many things about your paintings, your uh, you know drawings, and the etchings that just now uh, began this discussion. So uh, actually my next question, and because I'm a printmaker myself and I have such a deep love for, uh, for any mode of printmaking, I thought I'll lead you into this space of your practice, Lalitaji, which is working with, uh, with all forms of printmaking. You did, you did quite an extensive uh, number of etchings. You have also worked with woodcuts and uh, you know uh, so many other mediums. You did screen printing as well. Jyoti, if I may ask you to please share some of the uh, images of, of the prints. Yeah. Well, so, I want, I want uh, to, this is a very early uh, etching, which was exhibited in uh, West Gallery, uh, West, West German. Sorry. Right. And they made uh, posters. It, it you know something in the West when they like somebody, how well they organized that gallery. Uh, it, is a, it was a small place in West Germany. It, must, it is like um, we are in Lokhanwala, small place compared to the city, like that. And on the first day, as we entered, Yeah, don't don't it, worry about that. Yeah. It was it was lovely because uh you know I was not at this point of time, I was not doing very good etching, very not very good fine uh aquatics. But okay. yeah. There I saw the even the wheel where we, we use the I mean we take the print. Yeah. Everything yeah. is so well done. They have electricity and even to pour the aqua tint on the plate is done mechanically. Here we used to use hand, you know, with, uh, with the pouch. Yeah. Yeah. But not that it makes the, 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 too much of a difference. But the quality of the print comes excellent, which right. which we were, I was not able to do it at that time. Of course, with experience, uh, I think I learned on my own. My aquatics became better and better. That's what I meant that I've, I've made many mistakes. I've, I've spoiled many uh, plates. Also, uh, you know, how many years do some, I think you asked me, about 25 years I've, I've done only print. Because right. at, at that time I was teaching and there was no time to uh, paint canvases. 
whole day was teaching. But that passion in me was there to, to and yes, I forgot. Uh, <clears throat> uh, then I think it was at the same time uh, had this fellowship from the Ministry of Culture and they were paying me 500 a month. And that took me to go and buy a press, small press uh, in Baroda. And I stayed okay. with Nasreen Mawadi and she took me to Jyoti Bhatt and he designed that small press. It was there with me for 25 years and I used to work every night. At home? Yes. With, with this From 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock and then go off to work. So I was deprived of my sleep for so many years. So even now that pattern is there, I'm awake until one forty to one I can I do go to do some reading and I, I can't sleep early. Oh that's that's such an interesting thing to hear. We have some of your your prints of course right here for everyone to see. And uh, I think that uh, you know it seems it seems a very fine technique when we look at the images now even though you say that you probably made many mistakes, but uh, you know, the, the, the quality of the mezzo, the, the darkness and the, the sort of balance of the, of the space, the light and shade that you were bringing into these works, both in terms of aquatint, but also the lines, I think. Can we go to the ne next slides, please? Um, it's incredible. This work, in fact, comes back again here uh, as a part of the discussion. So during this entire period, you were also a mother yeah. and you were, you were running a family. So that, that would have been quite a large balance, isn't it, as well, to teach, to... Yes, yes it was a very, I think I have worked very hard those years. And now when I look back at it, today, of course, I can't do that kind of work. But at that time, yes, I, teaching and print picking was not easy, but you know, one thing with that happened with psychoanalysis is you, I found my uh, what can you say with uh, I had a lot of confusion before because I, I used to do a series on tantrism like seed series and then squares, moving squares in painting. And I had two exhibitions. And that's when I entered analysis. And I, I discovered my own journey. And I discovered that I'm not going to do abstracts anymore. It was a question okay. whether to do abstracts or non-abstracts. You know, it, it is a strange kind of a dilemma I had. And then I thought, I'm going to use only figures and I'm going to use my own way of doing it. Not And also, here I use boats and uh, uh, fruits and uh, pots. Now, if this is a kind of domesticity. At home, we have all this. And the paper boats, they are from my childhood. Uh, we have played with paper boats with my brother. Uh, and you know, in Calcutta, uh, every house has a uh, cemented uh, place where you water is stored, okay. and it's called Hauda. So uh, that, that's where in the afternoons, when we had holidays, uh, my two brothers and me uh, we used to play paper boats. So, you know, that used to come into your favor. Right there. And That's beautiful. Of course, uh, and, uh, as I said, uh, performers, yes. everything is, you know, uh, yeah, this kind of work. All these works, I think, because of uh, having my family as filmmakers, I have seen a lot of films, uh, all the international, every time the international films came, uh, I used to wait, I used to stand in the queues for eight and nine hours just to get the uh, you know the tickets. tickets and it was uh, Kalpana and I used to go and see you know, sometimes my husband and me. 
Yeah, we used to do that. And living in this uh, Palaba area, uh, in the city, it was very convenient to see everything. And uh, we were exposed to plays and films and poetry readings, everything. You know, but now we cut off from all that because of being in a very distant place away from the city. Right, right. Now, I think that, uh, you know, while we're talking right here, I'd like to also tell everyone that the wonderful exhibition is going on currently uh, on, on the platform that is, you know, hosted by the Goethe Centrum. And what we'd like to do is maybe have a very quick, a uh, small one minute view of, of the exhibition so that people can have a look and maybe go and visit it later. So Jyoti, if that's possible, we can, uh, we can just show the uh, little bit of, of the exhibition. I think wonderful opportunity for everyone to come in contact with so much of your work and I think it has all happened because we are facing the pandemic and because we have been in this virtual space so you know thank you to Gallery Art and Soul also for uh, really putting in so much and uh, yes we have uh, really enjoyed putting the exhibition together over to you Jaisal if you have other questions thank you Thank you so much. Thanks both in terms to done this and Rina. I must thank you the most. <laughs> thank you. Thank you and so much. And Jaisal also. Jaisal understanding my work from the beginning. You know, no, uh, I, I think I, I wanted to get the word. I got it now. Uh, analysis gave me a uh, discovery of uh, some, you know, it, it was Oh, no problem uh, i think it's 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 in um it's good when we look at you know your works you've been you know for over over a decade like what we what lena has showed you know what i kind of presented what's even been presented in the exhibition is not just your recent works you know we've shown works you know from 70s from 60s from 80s and when you see the entire body you know, and there are these consistent elements, you know, the self, you being the most, uh, the, the most consistent, of course, and um, the elements of uh, uh, compassion, you know, I, there are a lot of paintings which talk about your relationship maybe with your mother or with a, you know, between a daughter and a mother, um, you know, which are shown and depicted in your paintings. So uh, as much as there is the turmoil and the death, there is, of course, a lot of uh, compassion for the human, you know, the uh, that you feel, which comes through the paintings, you know, the agony that comes through the paintings. Um, so do you want to just talk about that a little? Exactly what, what you mean by that. As, um, you know, we spoke about death. And, um, you know, and we, we even saw that how that influence of, um, you know, Bergman's films, yes. especially the seventh seal, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, influenced you and you know it, it it brought about a series of works um now of course death is you know the the most heightened uh, form of uh, you can say you know uh, agony one can feel but there are other uh, um, uh, you can say transitions also uh, of suffering that are felt in your painting and not just suffering but then there's even a compassion there are these very close moments of relationships between you know a daughter and a mother uh, a daughter and the father the daughter and the grandmother very close relationship with families uh, everyday moments you know of you know having lunch or sitting on a dining table you know eating a fruit so there is this element of the everyday the mundane uh, moments that are there on your uh you know in your in your practice like the way i i even see it in maybe you know bhupen khakkar's practice or even prabhakar barve's practice you know where he uses the everyday objects as part of his practice so i just want you to maybe you know talk about that or share how you bring that out <clears throat> well i i think it is my personal journey because uh, uh recently i've lost my doctor and that is mm. very painful even today it's very painful to talk about her think about because she is to live with me in our own house we were in different rooms but early morning she would uh, shout saying amma come to my room talk to me don't brush your teeth come you know she was so affectionate and uh, that kind of affinity and love i didn't find it anywhere that is a different kind of each uh, each experience each uh, person gives to different kind of uh, uh, you know vibrations and love and yes. i know i have been through even relationships and in my youth and even that i find that every relationship was very intense mm -hmm. as long as it remained but today they are all memories so it's still there very beautiful for their memories <laughs> yeah. so i mean maybe you are reliving these memories through your canvases right i mean in Now, a way yeah perhaps yeah. and analysis gave me focus at least to think each artist must think only of doing one way of doing work they not do three work for i mean i know i have used uh, different uh, medias uh, in mediums in my work but even different mediums but there is that some kind of uh, continuity in my thought process yes of course that's very clearly you know visible so um, um a couple of things just come to my mind one is since you know you've been in this industry for so many years i mean you're one of the most senior or uh, artists today that we have and women artist i would like to you know stress on that and you're a self taught artist right um you know what is the advice you'd like to give the younger generation actually for a uh, for a self taught artist the discovery is more the discovery has to be more intense and one and must do many things like reading reading is very important and at least to us in in my home kalpana my husband all of us were readers and they does mm. and uh, that's how we have that large bookshelf yeah. uh, but different parts you can see no, all you, everyone and you have mentioned to me that you have enjoyed reading biographies of uh, yes. of biographies of yes us. yes even today i love by the people and of all great people uh, right now on reading a book on cinema art of cinema they are also and uh, reading some of the geniuses in filmmakers of the past and the present present so can you share some of the books that you've uh, read in in your earlier days you know with with with, with the audience you know with uh, you know because I, i do have the list of books that you've read but i would like it that you share it with you oh, know i can't remember all the authors yes well i can say few uh i've read uh, beethoven's uh, biography yeah. then uh, charles chaplin yeah 
everything. These are the great people and yes, Napoleon. <laughs> so people, I think this was the common thing between me and my daughter mm -hmm. is to share, you know, is to read and talk about them. So, and I, I think those things have made me understand that each of us uh, have a creativity and it should be intense, it should go on until the end. Beautiful. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to call Lena um, if you have any, you know, comments, more questions. We can even take questions from the audience if there is. Yes, in fact, uh, I'd like to announce again that if anyone has any questions, please do put it into the YouTube uh, chat box and we'll be able to address them. Uh, I think that uh, it's it's been incredible. Just, just uh, like you said, Jaisal, the work is absolutely speaking to everyone who looks at it because it touches common experience it touches everyday experience and yet it touches also at an emotional and spiritual level so i think that for us uh, it, it really matters not that you are self-taught or you were or you went to any institution but it's just that your work communicates so much and uh, there are so many stories that that simply keep flowing out. So uh, I think that's that's the experience. Uh, someone, in fact, uh, would like to ask you very specifically, um, what are the faces in the paintings representing? I think that, uh, that these faces are meant to be masks. I think that uh, uh, Jai Krishna Sanku is asking about the masks, if I am right. So you did address it earlier, but could you speak a little more perhaps about the whole idea of masks? The masks is one puts on all the time. That's what I mean. It's not only on a, in a play, but in real life, it's like Shakespeare speaks about all, all the people are on this. I mean, on the stage of life, we are all play things and that that is something I've always tried to show, that we are pretentious most of the time and we don't show uh, all the parts of ourselves. Even amongst friends, we, we'll, I mean, there are some friends you, you know, just, uh, just a friend only for, for that moment, but it's not a deep relationship. Right. So this happens with certain people to become very intimate. And intimate does not mean every time it is physical intimacy, but it can be only mentally. Yes. Yes. But it should be there. I feel that discovery of the uh, mental, physical should be there. For, and I'm just to discover. But it's, it's not just one relationship you're married to or you're, you're, you're ended to, you know. That right, helps right. that I'm not saying that these things happen. I mean, it's not something that you you do it purposely. But life is such that some things happen. Sometimes you meet the right people, sometimes you don't. Then, then when that person goes away, it's the pain that you go through. You know, all that has come into my work. I think, I think so. Right, right. Someone else, uh, Satya Nala, would like to ask, uh, what would be a good way to deal with grief? Grief Is art a natural form to overcome grief? I think that in your understanding, would art have been a method of overcoming the different kinds of grief you experience? So difficult to answer that this question. Because, uh, you know, uh, it has been a wonderful evening for me to speak, but I'm really not verbal. And I feel I have already shown what, and each painting was done at a certain stage, certain time. Now, if, if someone tells me, repeat, that's, it, it can never happen. It's for every one of us. One experience that took place at that particular time, you have done it. And then it's finished. 
the moment is finished and, and then you you uh, you go further you know right. that is the way of life uh, it's a uh, youth your age you know, you're aging now I'm aging so I I don't think of those things but you know everything has changed for me uh, I'm all alone I missed my whole family I miss so many people who I have loved they're all gone so. you've always spoken about that how how all these ups and downs are part of everyone's life and they are there it's the reality and one moves forward yeah um so we have a question from sumana roy and sumana says ma'am i am a young artist and i practice art every day but how does one keep themselves motivate motivated fully aware that tomorrow may not bring any promises so how how does one keep motivated i think that is what she wants to ask uh well for me art is like you know every day practice and breathing it doesn't mean that every day i hold a brush and paint um uh, it will it may be your thought process that is very important when you enter your studio or room where you are it may be a line you draw you know uh, in your drawing book or your uh, or your diary or whatever you or even it need not be just a line it could be some thought that comes in your words mm. if you are if you are saying some words also in in your book i mean everything is uh, creativity i feel and it is because we don't discover many times there are many who don't discover that creativity it is it's god given so i think it happens yeah and there are moments when you go blank to and that feel it comes to everyone whether you write a poet or you go to painting or uh, music or dance or anything but then see every performing artist uh, not i'm not making films but like music and dance they have to be doing uh, their practice apart from going on the stage and every day they are so disciplined i think much more disciplined than uh, us you know and it is beautiful that they because of their practice and even those uh, who can uh, take those uh, recordings is so wonderful you know and for me music is also very important Uh, in fact there was a time when i used to have whole range of uh, western classical and it happened i i must tell you this part uh we didn't have a record record we didn't record sheet or anything but bombay b used to have 1 1245 every day in b there was a and b uh, in equal section and b section had only Uh, western i mean in english and uh, everything your news was given in english everything and this part this 40 45 minutes was given to western classical and i happened to discover that through my cousin and a friend of uh, i mean uh, listening to some of these uh, great uh, great uh, I mean, uh, musicians. Yes, and... uh, musician. And I, I found that those were so inspiring that I used to look forward to this Bombay Bee because each day they used to show uh, some piece of uh, Beethoven, some piece of France, uh, France with or uh, uh, any any of these uh, people. And I used to listen. And my son was just born at that time, and. I used to, I mean, instead of singing, uh, you know, lullaby, I used to put on this music, and he says even in his subconscious, he's now a grown-up man, and he's 
lives abroad. Uh, he, he still remembers in his subconscious those those pieces. So you know, somewhere music plays such a big role in our lives. Yes, absolutely. I think that we have time for maybe a couple more questions. Let me quickly go through them. Uh, so Raghu Pillai says, Dear ma'am, I'm very happy to see you here and I have always loved your work. Uh, why were you only featured in one film? <laughs> why didn't you pursue cinema, oh. even though your brother was <laughs> Guru Dattji? Okay. <laughs> so. uh, I'll, I'll tell you that, that question. I was, uh, I was very young when I got married because my parents, it was an arranged marriage and those days, uh, well, the girl was 16, 17 days to look for a boy and who, I mean, boy who could earn well and all that. And it so happened, it was a proposal that came, first proposal, and my mother agreed for this. I mean, in those days, they wish to ask the girl whether she wants to get married to that person, whether she wanted to get, I mean, I was not asked at all. It was agreed by them. Yeah, not that uh, one part of my life is so, I mean, I, I must say, the first time when uh, we came out and talked to each other, I asked him, are you interested in art? And he said, no. <laughs> and that came as a shock to me. I went back to my mother and said, uh, I can't get married to a person who doesn't react to art at all. At that time, I mean, I was nothing. I was doing commercial art in JJ school in the third year, second year, second year. And uh, my mother sent me there thinking that I'll join an ad firm and start earning. She always felt that fine arts would not give any kind of uh, feedback, any kind of earning. And those days, there wasn't even, I mean, no exposure, nothing, no exit. I mean, I had not heard of exhibitions, and we used to live in Matunga, a small place. I grew up in a very small, modest, uh, we were very poor, so we could have afforded to do any other. In fact, my mother said, you can't do painting, you will have to do this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this way, even me, my husband also, he was saying he was solely to Dufferin and never asked whether he wanted to do it. So, you know, it, but this aspect I must say, to both my children, we gave full freedom, whatever they wanted. Now, Kalpana wanted to get, get into uh, theater, drama, films, everything. And of course, I did have, uh, I was very ambitious for her and I wanted, I tried to get her into uh, National School of Drama I spoke to Al Kazi here. I spoke to FTI at that time, Girish Kazra. And I did everything for her. But she ultimately said, No, mommy, if I do five years there and come out, which, which job will I get? I won't get a job uh, as a. You know, so, so, I mean, she was a very uh, thinking uh, girl. And she. She had her own way of thinking. Yeah. I think it's it was good. She went through, and I I know what she went through a relationship, which was I mean unheard of. I mean, father and I mean her uh, first partner was as old as her uh, father. I know it was not uh, accepted, and my brother broke off with me and he shouted and screamed at me on the phone, he said, I have nothing to do with you. How dare you allow your daughter to do this? And, you know, things like that I have gone through. But I, I was very determined. I was telling my mother, the, the kind of freedom you never gave me, it's, I'm going to give my daughter. So, I know they, even that freedom is also constricted. It's not, uh, it's not something that you, you can do what you want. Yes, but yes, I mean, she has also been so inspiring with her filmmaking. I think that yes. uh, uh, all of us have looked up to many of many of her works as well. 
So uh, that brings me to the next question, uh, which is uh, Georgina Maddox. Of course, she's really appreciating uh, uh, you and she's remembering the time she met you. But she's, she's asking you if cinema is still an influence for you in your work. Yes. You asked me the, the earlier question, why I- You acted in only to... one. <laughs> Uh, the cinema because that's we were in town and we used to attend lots of cinema uh, internationally and I was a uh, member of a uh, cine club so like uh, uh, Alliance Project cine club and also USI used to send us invitations every Wednesday but of course there were timings at 3 o'clock 6 o'clock they were very particular and the sitting arrangement was first come first up. But then, you know, these things I was I was exposed to. In the evenings, I had nothing to do. So I, I felt this way I could learn something from cinema. So. Yes, it has uh, been a very important part of your life. We come to, in fact, the last question because we're almost finished with our time. But uh, Shruti Kapadia asks, uh, you have always shown women in very strong portraits in your work. Please tell us about two such strong women from your own life. Not, I've not, I mean, this is not something that you decide to do, it just happens. Mm. Uh, some paintings, they, they, are, they just, they happen. Yes. And they speak and some don't. So I don't know why. And, and also reason not being uh, in cinema is because I got married very young. But, and also I had Kalpana and yes. So it was family and all that. And uh, yes, much later, Amir, Amir Khan offered me a small role. But that also, I must tell you why it happened. I was uh, teaching in the in Fort Farming Country of Jesus and Mary. There we had one section where we could choose to do any kind of uh, work for DG people. And they had this spastic society. Mm -hmm. And every Thursday they used to send us a bus uh, society. And small bus. And I used to take the nine standard girls and I used to take the equipment, you know, like vegetable printing or painting, everything we used to carry ourselves. And those children, they are rich and it's not like a big class in uh, cancer, in, cancer. in a special society. These children are only about four or five in a, uh, in a class. So, uh, and each one has a uh, problem, different kind of problem, autistic problem. Then, uh, I, I mean, now I can't remember the names, but different that some, you know, some children, they have space problems. They mm -hmm. feel they are in, they cooked up, not that they're cooked up in a place, but they don't have it you know, in their mind. Yeah. And some children, if they if they are taught a uh, letter B, they won't do it other way. You know? it, right. it is it is also the mind and and uh, the children that are born have defects of uh, all these things because of the pressure when they are born and the pressure that has come to the uh, brain. And the brain for a, every every human being, brain is very important. So you know it's very sad for them. But, uh, but I think art is very important. Uh, all those are affected children. Just make them happy. So did Amir Khan meet yes, you Amir there? Amir Khan knew that I, I had done work. And I had done work for um, 11 and a half years. Uh, specific scientists. So um, Amir found out because the Earlier, uh, the director of the Amil Gupte, uh, he had purchased one of the prints in Prithvi. In Prithvi, I had two shows of only prints 
Sanjana Kapoor, she had uh, asked me to do it. And at, at that time, it was very nice. The poem is put up a few prints. And at the opening, Sanjana used to invite all the artists on a Sunday and morning. And it was all Western food, uh, like the French and the Western. So it was fantastic mornings that used us. But now everything is in the past because she no longer be, believe, I mean, belongs to a country. So I, all that has stopped. <clears throat> also, I must tell you, for, for print making, um, Firoza Gutter. Mm -hmm. Firoza yes. also Firoza. Uh, encouraging us, and she used to have uh, groups, group, and she, she made. Uh, Port, port, port of our work. Yes, yes. She has been incredibly supportive, I think, yes, of yes. so many artists, and and it's been very special. So um, I think that we have actually now come come. Would would you like to add anything more, Lalita ji? Because we are coming to the end of the program, oh. and so. Um, it has been it has been really incredible. Thank you so much for all your sharing, for your time and energy, and Jaisal, you as well. I think we are all here very grateful and so happy to have spent this time with you, even if it is online. And the audience as well, thank you for being there. And now I'd like to hand over to you, Amita, to uh, say the last few words for this program. Thank you. Thank you, Lena, and thank you, Jaisal. And Lalita ji, this was absolutely delightful. It was such a wonderful journey down the memory. You intertwined life and, of course, parts of it, death and birth, uh, with such deep and moving uh, memories that you brought out from your personal life, from your work life. It was, it was very moving. It was a very beautiful journey that you took us through um, uh, this hour, of course, uh, excellently, um, you know, um, curated and directed and steered by, by Jaisal and Lena. Uh, this, was, this was wonderful from masks to memory, from pain to passion. Um, you're very passionate in the last one. I'm so glad you do bring up uh, that is a mean pay because it, it has uh, it has touched a whole lot of us and your role um, has been quite calming and quite uh, instrumental in bringing home the ultimate underlying message that Amir Khan was bringing out uh, through your presence, through your, uh, through your, you know, being part of this very large. And I had no idea that you had spent so many years working with children. So it's, it's incredible how you have been able to bring the passion and, and all your uh, experiences together. Thank you so much. Um, uh, it, it is for very good reason that we uh, chose uh, my colleague Jyoti who has and Pal who have been in touch with you throughout to invite you as the distinguished speaker, uh, which is who you are. You also mentioned that the posters in Germany um, um, were so nicely put up everywhere to make you feel important. That is what you are. And you have brought out those very emotions and significance and symbolism for us in this one hour. It, was, it, it has been very memorable. Thank you so much for being part of this platform uh, at the Goethe Centrum Hyderabad. Uh, I thank my colleagues, Jyoti and Pal, to, to, to really carry this through. I thank Lena and Jaisal, not only for conducting this very delightful, very memorable conversation, but also for the online exhibition that has been curated. It is a very beautiful, beautiful exhibition. And for those who are here and others who may not be able to travel to see these works, this platform, the Digital Pass platform, enables us to get closer 
to the works of uh, Lalita ji. Um, thank you, Gallery Art and Soul. Thank you so much, Jessel Thacker, for, for um, uh, loaning us the works and really helping us uh, uh, put this exhibition together. And Lena for uh, carrying it through, curating it, and um, connecting us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you to the audience, Jessel, Lena, and Lalita ji. I'm indebted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A wonderful evening to everyone. And um, yes, look forward to more programs and do log in to our exhibition.